Hi, this is David. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at Iris Alerts. So if I jump right in here and trigger an alert with my tag, I just press the button, uh, the attack alarm or the panic button. So you can see how, A, we got a pop up here from the system tray in Windows. We see the alert appearing in the web client. Uh, we've got the location on the map and we've got the handler on the left side and the log on the bottom. Here's a mirror of my uh, Android mobile device and we can see that if we uh, look at the push notifications or the notification list, we have the alert appearing here. So Iris pushed that alert to the phone and if I click on it, it will open up that alert in basically a mobile uh, format for the handler. On the top here, I've got the view that I would see in the El Paz display panel, which is a seven inch touch screen. And this page is basically formatted for that screen. So if I click on that, I also have essentially a handler for that in which I would have to go to the actions, for example, to take these actions the general for the other information so if i uh, let's say use the web client to uh, close the alert notice i can't close it yet because i've got actions pending i'm going to click on those actions i'm now able to close the alert and i'm going to click on close and it should disappear from the mobile and from the uh, display panel as well so the display panel reverted back to its clock. The alerts view on the Iris web client is clear and the mobile is clear as well. So that is, uh, gives you an idea of some of the means that we can display alerts. A, the alert notifier that pops up from the system tray, the web client, the display panel and the mobile. But we've got other means of dispatching these alerts to responders. You, we have, for example, pagers. Uh, we can send to pager, pagers, and we'll look a little bit later about how do we configure that in Iris. To decked phones, we can send SMS messages as well as push notification to mobile phones. We can send an email, and we can send uh, just free formatted text events containing the information of the alert to third parties using a variety of protocols, whether it be TCP, UDP, HTTP, et cetera. And we'll have a look at that as well, how we do that within the setup screens. Let me pause now while I start up the EV2 client. Actually, it's running, but I'm gonna change the screen so that we don't have too much clutter. In order to look at the different alert types and the structure of an alert, we're going to use the Iris Viewer client in the setup screens. If I expand my alerts and add by type, I can see that I have a variety of different types of alert, alerts that I can add, including button press alert, um, exit alerts, which is the location, input alerts in order to alert on, let's say, a dry contact, as well as third party events that come in and the temperature alert to alert if a sensor uh, detects a temperature which deviates from a predefined range. As an example, we're going to add a location alert. And here we see in the inputs tab where we define the criteria of this alert. So we can say that if, let's say an infant arrives at a particular location, when he's in the active status, then perform the following action. In other words, that's the trigger of the alert. Now we say, okay, let's send this alert to these clients and uh, we can set, for example, an output, which would be, let's say, a lock a door and play a sound. So baby lost or baby alarm. 
Now I've basically defined my alert, that's it. So I've got my criteria and the actions, the outputs, what to do. The also, we also have some additional interesting things. We've got a schedule. We can say at what hours of the day and what days of the week this alert will apply. And we can define, let's delete that one. We can define all sorts of escort criteria. So let's say, okay, if it's escorted by a nurse staff, then suppress the alert. Okay, that's an example of a location alert. We've got the, the criteria of the alert and inputs. You've got the what to do in the outputs, the schedule, and some other information, in this case, the override. Now, what if we want to set an output that is a function of the location, for example? So we have the what we call our location, our um, local indicator where we decide, okay, for these alerts that I select here, uh, based on the location, then set a different output. So for example, if an infant arrives at door A, set, lock the door A lock. If the infant arrives at door B, lock the door B lock. And so we have only one alert. We don't need to define a separate alert for each door. Okay, that is regarding the configuration of the alerts themselves, but where do I configure how to dispatch this information to other systems or to various displays? Well, we already saw that in the alert, we had the output, right? We went to the output screens where we said which clients it will appear on. But in addition to the clients, we can send it to pagers or we can send it to third party systems. So to do that, I go to my LPAS pagers module and I add, create a paging module. And in the settings, I define, I select a serial interface. Well, what is a serial interface? It could be any of the interfaces, the protocols that have been installed with the system. So here I've got, for example, to a, an OSTCO nurse call system, we can send an email, we can send a uh, packet to an ESPA pager. We can write to a file. We can send an HTTP request. We can write to an RS-232 port. We can send uh, uh, to a TCP port, just a IP address and, and port. So we've got all these options as serial interfaces. So let's say we define a UDP port. Okay, We'll go in there and we'll give it a uh, a port and an, an address and an outgoing port. So these are, this is the remote IP address and the port. Now we go back to our paging module and we say, okay, we want to use that UDP gateway. We could have given it a name and say, okay, that's where we want to send the message. And then here we can decide, okay, I want to send it with this protocol, right? So I'll have the status of the, uh, whether it's an open or a close of the alert, the ID of the pager, and the event ID and, and the message that's sent by, the default message that's sent by that alert. The alert message we defined back in the alert. We go to the, uh, here in the message, we could use various variables. Badge is at reader. So that creates, that formats the message. And then in the paging module, then you can define, okay, I wanna just send the message to this serial gateway. In this case, it's a UDP port. I decide to which pagers to send it to, and I decide which alerts to send, right? So I might not want to send all of the alerts to this. I just want to send certain alerts. So I select which alerts of the alerts that I created I want to send. So that is one of the means of sending alert information to a third party system or to a pager, etc. That more or less wraps up the alert. We, we learned about the various displays of the alert. We learned about um, how to configure an alert, the different types of alert, the trigger versus the action, the uh, local indicator where we define an output per location. And finally, we discussed the paging options in order to send the alert message to a third-party device. 
That's it for today. And thank you very much.